Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, H &E Life. I'm Dr. Cindy Wong. So last time I talked about tips for grossing, tips for previewing, and tips for writing reports. So this time I'll finish up with tips for how to study in residency, tips for fellowship applications, as well as some tips that I wasn't quite sure where it should go, so some general miscellaneous tips. Okay, let's get started. I feel like a very frequent question that a lot of people ask how to study in residency and what to study in residency. And honestly, it is such a tough thing to give advice on because everyone studies in a different way. I know if you ask some of the older attendings, they'll be like, you should be reading papers or textbook an hour every night. And honestly, I feel like that's such outdated, outdated like advice because especially when you're on a busy rotation like search path, when you're on surgical pathology, you're like grossing, you're previewing, you're signing out, you're writing reports, you're running around scattering slides, showing things. It's just so much. And by the end of the day, you're so tired. And I feel like it's almost unreasonable to expect you to go home and read for an hour because everyone has lives. It is very fair to say that should be your time. And if you want to spend that time studying, then yay to you. But in terms of studying, I would say the best way to study, honestly, would be to kind of read up on the entities that you are looking at at work. So while you're previewing something and it's something that you're not very familiar with, you should just like pull up a book and spend five minutes reading the couple paragraphs it has on that entity or go into expert path or look up some paper about it. And that five minutes you spend reading, if you do it for a couple interesting cases, that actually adds up to be a good amount of time. And but when you're on surgical pathology and you're tired, you don't have to. And I think most residents will do the studying during clinical pathology rotations which are usually much more relaxed or more relaxing uh, AP rotations like an autopsy. You're not going to have an autopsy every day on the days you don't have an autopsy. It's good to start reading some books, reading some papers, whatever you find is the easiest study is if it's read a textbook or is to read like pathology outlines or to read excerpt path. However you think is the most influential for you, do it. And then what you should be studying on. Wow, that's really hard because in pathology, it's so broad, right? I would recommend that while you're on surgical pathology, if you find time to read about AP things, if you are on a subspecialty sign out and you are signing out GYN for the week, it will be nice if you have time to read GYN for that week or on the weekend, if you want to spend preparing for GI the following week, it will be to spend maybe an hour reading about some common GI diagnoses in preparation for the following week. I have to say when I was a PGY1, I did spend like two hours every Sunday before my first rotation. Like for example, we do subspecialty by weeks, right? So the very first time I was about to start a new subspecialty that didn't do, I spent about two hours reading Malavi, the chapter in Malavi about that subspecialty and that I felt like it prepared me for the common things you'll see on that specialty. It's impossible to like read in depth in the sense that you'll be able to understand everything you'll see when you're previewing. But for me, I spend say an hour or two. If I was going to go on guy next week, I'll read guy. I'll read placenta. If I was going to go on uh, soft tissue, I'll read the soft tissue chapter. And I'll do that for every new rotation. And the last tip I have for studying as a resident, especially in your first three years, is don't waste money buying the Q-Banks. Q-Banks don't really do you a good job in terms of kind of helping you understand the things you need to learn as a functioning resident and doing your clinical work. The Q-Bank is really for that quick jab at the very end for you to prepare the random knowledge you need to learn for the boards and then probably forget and never use it again in the future. These Q-Banks are not cheap either. Like a monthly subscription to a Q-Bank is like $100 or if you want to buy a year-long subscription, it's like five, $600. So I wouldn't recommend 
spend you using that money. That's it for some of the studying tips. Like I said, it's really hard to give studying tips because everyone studies in their own way. I do have another set of tips to give for fellowship applications and it seems like a lot of people are also very interested on how to boost their fellowship application. For fellowship applications and for jobs in the future, a lot of it comes down to basically the letter of recommendation. The letter of recommendations are a huge thing and this is why I kind of did a video before on how to impress your attendings is you are unfortunately in pathology if you're an APCP four year at the end of your second year you have to start compiling your uh, application for fellowships because you start interviewing say like August of your third year and it's uh, important to get to know your attendings and to know which attendings to ask for a letter. For example, if you are applying for GYN, you might not want to ask every GYN attending you know to write your letter because there might be a GYN attending who didn't like you or you feel like you guys didn't jive very well. It might be worthwhile not to ask that attending but instead ask another attending who you work very well to write you a good personal letter. If you feel like some big name in your department can't write you a good letter then just don't ask that big name in your department to ask you a letter. If you only work with the person maybe a few times maybe it not, it's not worthwhile to have a very generic letter from the chair of your department if you've never worked with the person whereas if you have an attending who you've worked extensively with but they're not in the specialty you're applying for it's that letter is still worth so much that said in terms of your letter recommendations you can't just have a bunch of junior attendings for example if you enjoy working with all the young attendings because they kind of like have the same feel as you you don't want all your letters to be from junior attendings you still need to make sure at least one of the letters is from a senior attending if not two of the letters are from more senior level attending just ask people who will write you a very personal, positive letter. So the other thing about fellowships, if you want to go to a top fellowship in the subspecialty you are interested in, unfortunately, they're all kind of in the big academic centers. So that means your research, your publications, your case reports, your conference meetings, and all of that plays also into a big component into your fellowship application. If you just want to go to a fellowship, then it's not as important. Like you don't care where the fellowship is as long as it's the subspecialty you want to do, then the research component might not be as special. But if it's in the top program, for example, if you want to go to the best design fellowships in Brigham and Women, you're not going to go to Brigham and Women if you don't have research behind you. If you are a person who's never done any research, but you're like great clinically, you're still not going to get that fellowship position because a big academic center like that would prefer that you've had done something and you have published something. And the more you publish in their, in their eyes, the more desirable you are because they all, like all academic, large academic centers want their fellows as well as their residents to do research while they're there. So if you seem like a person who has no interest in research, then uh, a big academic center might not be as interested in you, uh, but there's no magic number and I honestly don't know what that would be even if there was one. So sorry, I can't help in that aspect. But ways to help you when you are looking for fellowship to do away rotations. So for example, if you know as a PGY-1 or as a P early on PGY-2 that you want to go to Stanford to do your GI fellowship, then it's worthwhile to look into coming to Stanford and doing a, a two-week, one-month away rotation. And that way you'll get to interact with the current fellows, you get to interact with the attendings, and it looks very good for you and when you do your fellowship application because they know you have expressed interest, they've also had interact with you so they know if there's, you're someone they want to work with. So like I said, just keep in mind that fellowships are two years in advance so you have to start looking at these away rotations two and a half years in advance that way you could do the rotation before you start applying. Um, and also it doesn't hurt to do a rotation during the application cycle too. For example, if you couldn't set it up before uh, end of second year, if you set up your away rotation, say in the you know July or August of your third year, it will also be very beneficial for your overall fellowship application. 
<laughs> All right, so I've been rambling on for a while now, so I'm just gonna a few more tips about residency in general. Senior residents and chief residents are there to be a resource for the junior residents. If you don't know about something, you could ask them if you wanna show them a slide because you think it's a really cool case and you wanna ask their opinion. I feel like most seniors are gonna be like, oh yeah, sure, let me tell you about this case. Or if you have no idea what's gonna happen when you apply for fellowship applications and you wanna to talk to like a PGY4 who's gone through it, they should be glad to help you uh, navigate the process. Of course, if you don't have good peers for you to ask about stuff like this, you always have me and my channel as I will constantly share all of this information with you. Uh, as long as I think that it's important, I will try to share it. <laughs> if I haven't thought of something that's important, please let me know down below so I can make videos about it. And then I feel like it's always fair to ask your attendings about their opinions about like what they think about is important for their your application for a job or what they think is important for your application for fellowship or if they have any general guidance. So I feel like as a resident, you should never fear asking your senior residents, your ch chiefs or your attendings questions about career and pathology because that's really what they're all there for. That included, you know, if you want to find out more about a fellowship, you could always ask the current fellow who is doing that fellowship in your program. So another big tip I have is as a junior resident, especially if you're PGY1 on your first half of your, you know, first six months of your PGY1, don't feel the need to rush into doing projects. I know I might have scared you a little bit when I was saying how if you want to do a fellowship, you should have research projects under your belt, but I don't mean that you need to like do research all the time, especially if you just start out within your first four, five, six, even eight months into residency, you really should spend that time getting to know the program, getting to know what you need to do as a resident, know your responsibilities and learn pathology because that curve is just so steep. Of course, if you are an, a baller resident and you are acing everything you're already doing and you still have free time, if this is your third month in, go ahead, get a project. But if you've already one of those residents who feel like you are stressed out as it is trying to learn the ropes of your program, then it's not a good idea to pick up a project on top of that because it's better to wait off on it and then get a better handling of the basics before you try to accomplish something more intense. And I feel like research projects in pathology, the more you know in terms of a basics, the better you will be able to like comprehend the goals of that project. And then in terms of not rushing into things, I want to kind of hint that you should not rush into looking at jobs. There is almost no point as a PGY1 to look at what jobs are out there or how much the salary is uh, and where jobs are available and what kind of jobs are available. Because in the four years or maybe five years, six years, depending on how many fellowships you want to do, the job market would be drastically different. Honestly, it's not something you need to worry as a PGY1. And I wouldn't really think too hard about it. I don't want you to limit yourself to do fellowships only in the subspecialty that will you think will make you money in the future, because that would honestly make you very miserable to do a job that you have no interest in. Follow your passion in pathology and pick a subspecialty or pick a field in pathology that you enjoy doing because I want to say like money doesn't matter but of course who am I lying money matters but the I feel like the difference between say a person who is doing heme path versus a person who's doing GI path there might be some difference but it can't it's not going to be so drastic that it will like be the make or break number for you that was a lot and I, the last thing I want to end on is I want to everyone to know that if you are struggling in residency, uh, may it be with the workload, maybe burnout, maybe with depression, always talk to your program director and your chief residents. They're there to support you. So never feel like you have to do it alone. And I think that's it. I think that's all the advice I could think of now to give everyone. And I've probably listed a ton of stuff and take it as you will use every advice I give you, use none of it, but it's all there for you if you need it. And I hope this has helped someone at least. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe and I'll see everyone later. Bye.